wonderful, beautiful space, and you could just feel the energy here. Well, I am so grateful to be here, and thank you, Richard, for the wonderful introduction and the invitation to come and speak this morning. So the title of my talk is Being in the Flow. And as I thought about it, when it first came, it was about being in the flow. So who are you being in the flow of life? You know, when life presents you with things, who are you being? And so I looked up the word being. True nature, nature of being. Then it's also potential and possibility. And then the big B, ing, is God itself and all that it represents. And so as I thought about the topic, I wanted this to be more of a conversation, me having a conversation with you about things that I've been through. And hopefully, they will present an opportunity for you to see things differently, to experience your life differently, to experience the good and the bad in a way that allows you to continue to move forward because everything in our life is about moving forward. What's next? I tell my students all the time, whatever's before you is for you. Now, it doesn't mean you have to like it, okay? Because sometimes things come before us and we don't like it, we don't, I mean, that's the last thing we wanna see. But what I will tell you in my life, the things that have showed up that I didn't want probably taught me the most lessons. And Richard knows that for a fact. In 2014, I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And what was so amazing about that journey was how synchronistic everything happened in order. And what was really amazing was that before I even went to the hospital, one of my minister friends, Dwight Smith, he told me, he said, Robin, remember this. It's just a diagnosis. It doesn't have to be a prognosis. And we didn't know what was going on. Second thing that happened, I went to church the following Sunday. Richard's talking about nonviolent communication. Praise the Lord. What I thought about is all the negative, all the violent language around cancer. And I decided that I was not going to have that. We were going to transcend, transmute, and transform. And I will tell you that's what happened to me. I stand here before you today with no evidence of cancer. And the reason I tell you this is because in our world, it's supposed to be one of the worst. And what I will tell you is I use every tool in my toolkit, every meditation I ever went to, every class I went to, and I pulled everything out because then it was time for me to walk the talk. And this is what being in the flow is about. It's about walking our talk. Do we believe? Do we really believe? Do we live these principles? Do we live this life? And it's not always easy because people and things will come up and you'll question, really seriously? You want me to do what? But what I do know is that we come here with everything we ever will need. It's inside of us. Are we willing to dig deep? Are we willing to look to see how we can see it differently? Because just because the world says it's a bad thing doesn't mean it's, it is. And it can be. But how are you going to move through these situations, good and bad? Are you going to welcome it? Richard talked about embrace it. I have embraced the things that have happened to me because what other choice is there? And because I teach science mind principles and I teach unity principles, I cannot, I cannot, otherwise I'm a hypocrite if I don't walk these, if I don't walk this talk. And so the deal and the invitation is to all of us, we're practicing this Christianity. And so that means you get to practice. <laughs> so we practice these principles and we walk the talk. And it's so important to become that which you are. Because we can all talk the language. We can learn the words. But it, is it in here? Is it coming from the inside out? Everything that we speak, say, or hear. I was in the doctor's office. And I saw a sign that says, the body hears, 
everything we think, feel, and say. Hmm. Makes you wonder, makes you kind of pause and say, what am I thinking, saying, and feeling to this body? Because the body is our best reflection of who we are. It outpitches what's going on in the inside. So we have an opportunity to really come to a place where we are in agreement that that presence and power that is us, that is us and flows through us and is in everything that we do, everything that we do, small, big, little, doesn't matter. Spirit is ever evolving through us. And are we giving it room? Are we welcoming it? Are we trusting it? That song said, I trust God. And let me tell you, before I went through that pancreatic episode, that was the question I was asking. Do I trust God? And God gave me an opportunity for me to find out how much I trusted God. Because I couldn't just walk it. And what was so amazing was the way that we approached it. We approached it from a very spiritual point, but we took action from that spiritual place. My friends and I, we prayed over the chemo. We prayed over every aspect. And I required my team to talk positive language, affirmative language. We were not having any of that. And you know, I was blessed with a great team. And that told me I was in charge. That was the biggest mistake of their lives. Because I, I made them own that. I made them own it. Because they told me I was in charge. It was their job to work for me. And I made them work for me. Because I knew who I belonged to. And I didn't know whether I was going to be here or not. Because that wasn't the goal. Reverend Joyce Fisher Pierce, I met with her. And she asked me a question. She said, Robin, what do you want? Healing or cure? I choose healing every time. Healing is long lasting. And so when we have these opportunities in front of us, what needs to be healed? What needs to be revealed? We've all heard that. What needs to be healed and what needs to be revealed? And the things that need to be revealed, we know. But the things that need to be healed, we allow. There's an allowance. There's a surrender when you're in the flow. I was telling Richard. When I got here, this, um, got here yesterday, it was the first time in over 18 months I had driven anything over 25 miles. And I drove 90 miles here yesterday. Because I was going with the flow. I said, how in the world can I talk? I'm going to be being in the flow, and I'm going to resist. All my drivers were out of town. Every single person that has driven me over the last year and a half was out of town, out of the country. And I'm thinking, oh, crap. <laughs> so I just said, you know what? In my quiet time, I said, Lord, you're going to show me how to do this. And how God showed me how to do it was to be present in each and every moment. Don't worry about the 90 miles. Let's take it one inch at a time. And I was present. And I was kind of laughing on the way because I was like, oh, my God, I've driven 25 miles. Oh, my God, it's raining. But OK, I'm in the present moment. Right now, I'm safe. And we know that when we're with spirit, we're always safe, no matter what it looks like. I don't, mean time, I don't know about y'all, but I don't know how many times I've used the prayer of protection to remind myself that I'm safe. That's a tool that God is moving in, through, as, and for us. And there is not a place that God is not. And so when we allow the flow of God to be our experience, and we can Go with ease and joy. And life's not always easy. I mean, when I was moving through cancer, um, life wasn't always easy. Oh, well, that's not true. It was pretty easy. But the things I had to do were not always easy. And what I learned in that lesson is that sometimes we're not going to like the things we have to do. But we get to do them anyway. Because in the long run, it's something that's going to move us forward. And what I thought when I was diagnosed with cancer was that this was going to be a gift for someone else. And I can't tell you the number of people that I've spoken to over the years and been a, a way shower, so to speak, because the way I handled it and the way I approached it was so different than what people do. You know? And it's presented me with the opportunity to 
uplift people and encourage people through this opportunity for healing, because that's what we called it. It was an opportunity for healing. Everything that we go through is an opportunity. The challenges, they just look a little bit more difficult. But what is your perspective? You know, we've come this far. You've gotten to be as old as you are, however old you are, through your trials and tribulations. And you're still here. And you're here. So if you're here, that means that you're open to possibilities. We walk afraid. Because fear is just the unknown. And what is there to be afraid in the unknown? Because God is there, right? There's not a place that God is not. So as we be in the flow, we get to have the opportunity to change our perspective, to see things differently, to welcome the opportunity to grow. Being is part of growth. And when we are in the flow, you know, because life has synchronicity. It flows. It ebbs and flows. And are we willing to ride the current? Because we're always supported. We're always surrounded. And what I found really interesting is God presents people to you when you need it. And people that you may not even think are on your radar. They show up. And it's like, mm-mm-mm. I'm so grateful because sometimes you have, you know, things going on in your life and the people that are the closest to you, like when I was moving through, couldn't handle it. And God brought me a whole crop of people to support me. And even like when I wasn't driving, God presented me with a whole bunch of people to drive me. And I had to remember the benefit of ask. And my acronym for ask is ask, seek, no. So in the asking, you create the window. You create the opportunity. And that God has people just waiting, waiting to support you. So when we're in the flow, we're allowing ourselves to be open and receptive, to have the assurance that God is always there, to have the faith that we are equipped. We are equipped for everything. And that what we need to know, we will know when we need to know it. Sometimes we don't need to know everything. You know, I was the kind of person, I wanted to know exactly what's going to happen at the end of that row, before I even start. But that's not the way it works. Trust means taking a step, waiting for some more information, because you're going to get the information. And if you expect it, what's your level of expectancy? You know? Are you expecting an answer? Or are you expecting support? Because it is available, but it only is available if you recognize it, if you create an opening for you to see it and to receive it. Because God don't force. God never forces us to do anything. That's why he gave us free will. We get to go willingly, willingly, and joyfully, just jumping in with enthusiasm and excitement and t trust me, I'm not always like that. But I remember. That song talked about remember. Love, serve, and remember. And in our humanness, we forget from time to time. But in our spirit, we already know. And so for me, you know, when I started my spiritual journey, you know, my goal was to awaken people to their spirituality to allow them to embrace it. Because you can be awakened and not be embracing it. To embrace it and then to express it. You know, there's nothing that speaks louder than a person that is filled with spirit. That light goes before you and people want to be around you and they don't even know why. But it's because of that, that inner being, that light that shines because we are light. We are love. And when we choose to be in the flow, it like all comes together. And it's like riding on like water in a, on a river. Is that how you say that? You know, the water just keeps flowing. It doesn't matter if there's a rock. It doesn't matter if it's a log. It keeps going. And you know, one of the things that helps me to stay in the flow is just to look at nature. Nature is my 
best example. I, oh. It's amazing to me how nature just unfolds. It's like, you know, the sun's out there. Look at these beautiful flowers. And it's all God. And it's just unfolding. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop because we don't like it or it's inconvenient. It just keeps going. And we get to keep going because we are that spirit. We are that gift. And I just want you guys, ladies and gentlemen, spiritual sisters and brothers and beings, to just allow. Allow yourself to be open, to be receptive, and to allow that beingness that is you to rise. Because we, when we speak a word, we say a word, we get the first fruits. So why not allow it to be filled with joy and light and laughter, even when it doesn't feel so? Because joy is inside, love is inside, peace. You know, we talk about peace. Someone was saying, you know, about peace, but we get to be the peace that we want the world to be. And I'm just so grateful, grateful for this opportunity to share and to be present with you. Because it is, I can feel you. And you know, when I do my talks, I always take the audience, the congregation, you guys make me better than I am. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunity to be here this morning and to just remind you that spirit is ever present, ever available, and moving in, through, as, and for you. Spirit is never against you. Never. There is no thing or no one against you. This life is for you. And if it's for you, then why not embrace it? And I release this. And so it is. Amen. So now we're going to have a time of meditation. I'm just going to ask you to remove everything from your laps and just allow yourself to become one right where you are. The chair, the room, each other. Take a deep breath in and let it out slowly. Take another breath in and let it out slowly. Know that there is only one presence, one power, one life. And that life is you. This moment is for you. A moment to remember who you are and whose you are. Take a breath in and let it out slowly. Know that the one lives in you and it is you. Take a breath in and let it out slowly. And as we go into the silence, I want you to take this time just to be, to be you. To be you in all your magnificence and brilliance. 
to remember that you are God's gift. As we slowly come back to this time and space, I invite you to remember the gift that you are and that the world would not be the same, a whole big world would not be the same without you. You are a gift of light and love and remember to be you and so it is amen Expression of your 